Welcome to She Cooks, barely. So, I wish HelloFresh came with a teenager to wash these dishes. <laughs> it's not that very many dishes though. Look, it's not that bad. This is actually only this. And then those few little items. Wow, very nice, very nice. Enjoy guys. And here's my HelloFresh meal of the day. Today's amazing meal is going to be this. Let's hope mine looks like that. And tastes like it. <laughs> Meatloaf balsamico. They have all the amazing ingredients. I have washed them all. Little yams, little garlic cloves, some um, parsley, snap peas, panko breading, sliced almonds, vinegar, some happy eggs, ketchup, ketchup, y'all, <laughs> and honey. All right, step one, let's go. So I'm cooking meatloaf. Uh, let's see, one tablespoon of vinegar. Mom? Yes. What is a tablespoon? Oh, that's a teaspoon. I never think about that. Like sometimes I get confused because when you're not in the kitchen, you'd be like, I just use a spoon. So this one is a teaspoon. This one's a tablespoon. Okay, fine. Because I need the simple, I mean, you know, there's somebody's got to be like me out there that would not, or would not remember the difference, you know? Oh, does this say vinegar? Oh, I got confused because this vinegar is black. And I'm used to having white vinegar. But it smells like vinegar. It is balsamic vinegar, so it's the good kind. But what were you asking me, Mom? The ingredients. Oh, so, oh yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm just following along, one step at a time. So I'm just now putting vinegar and ketchup in the same bowl. Press on a girl, ketchup, minced garlic clove. Have you finished your workout? I finished you, no. Oh, okay. All right, well, I'm cooking and videoing at the same time. Mother dear. Yeah, oh, okay, you're hanging out, all right. I mean, if you're not gonna talk, I can tell you're watching TV back there. No, I, I, you said you're videoing, so I'm trying not to talk. Oh, well, no, that's what I'm saying. We can have a conversation, it just, you know. So say the ingredients as you go along. Yes, I am mincing the garlic right now. Minced garlic. Uh-oh, see, I can't be losing ingredients trying to show it to the camera. Hilarious. And you always are supposed to have measuring spoons or measuring cups that the size that you can put in a door in addition to glass measuring cups. That's way advanced for a new cook. No, it's not. <laughs> and I do have glass measuring cups, though. But you, you missed what I said. You need... The measuring cups that are small that go in a drawer, they're the plastic cups. They're, they don't even look like a cup, but the measurement is a cup. Okay. I'll, I'll take a picture of mine and send it to you. Again, that is advanced. That sounds so advanced. Have you ever put parsley in your uh, meatloaf? No. A parsley, I thought, was just to decorate a plate. I didn't know we ate parsley. Yes. But you've had par you do you cook with parsley at all? Not unless I'm doing the recipe from Hello Fresh. <laughs> oh, is that serious? Yeah, I don't a lot of, many people cook with parsley. I just it's not a, a particular vegetable I would use. Or is it a vegetable or herb? It's a herb. Thank you.
I'm gonna keep this parsley to the side. I'm not gonna do too much of it because it smells like a plate garnish. Like I don't know. Yeah, don't don't put too much if you don't like it. I don't know if I like it. I think I bit it on occasion being at a restaurant and it was on the side of the right. plate. Just put a little. See, it's things like that. I guess you can still, although you're doing Hello Fresh, you can kind of um, make sure it's to your. Also, take to be all right if you're not certain about something. Also. Um... Mom, can you I take mean, your what, tooth guard what, out, what, though? What meat are you? Can you take what your meat are you using? teeth guard out? I said, what meat are you using? Uh, I believe it's beef, they said. Okay, regular ground beef. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they want me to half and peel onion using a large holes on a grater. Oh, see, it's getting advanced. Use the large holes on the grater. Grate one onion half into a large bowl. Use other half as you like. Okay. Let's find a large bowl. And the large holes in the grater. I've never done an onion like this. Good thing I wear glasses, because it's pretty juicy. Who does an onion on a grater? I wonder what the, what does it do instead of just chopping it up? What's the difference? I don't know, give it at least the juices, I guess. It does, it's, it's so juicy. I'm glad I have my glasses on because it would have popped in my eye a long time ago. And also it's hard to hold because it's so, Slippery, and then you get close to the graze, you don't want to cut your hand. Right. I thought you told me because you saw my text. <laughs> I don't know if this is right, but you know, I did what it said. Yeah. It's not going to look pretty. Yeah, it's it doesn't look, look nice at all. <laughs> it does not look nice at all. But we definitely released the juices. So I guess these big parts that didn't get grated, I got to just take out of here. And then just pop them and put them in there. You want all of what they said. You want to use all Ooh, of Ooh, now my eyes are burning. Got to be. Got under the glasses. Whoosh. You got to... You got to uh... Onions really make a, and they don't call out for bell pepper, huh? No bell pepper. Mm -mm. Yeah, onions and bell pepper really make a meatloaf. Oh my eyes! Oh my lord, Jesus! Oh my lord, Jesus! You need to take your glasses off and wash them because the juice is on it and it's just getting in your eyes. Now this is where I disagree. I don't agree that you should wash your eyes because your hands. I didn't say wash your eyes. I said wash your eyeglasses because the eyeglasses have the juice still on them. I'm glad you guys can hear how my mother just yells at me all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm so glad y'all get to see this personality that I deal with for the, my entire life. <laughs> I'm so I glad. That's so amazing. So amazing that I've caught you on <laughs> camera. Uh, yeah, so amazing. Know. Yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> Show her herself, Jesus. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is it. Okay, so now, where am I? Um, it says use the other half as you like. All right, add garlic. All right, add the garlic to there. Um, okay, let me get the beef out. I have the beef still... In the refrigerator because I don't play having that meat out. Here's the beef. It is ground beef. Looks like that. And what does it say? Do add garlic, parsley, panko beef. Half tablespoon of salt in a bowl with onion. Okay, so here's the parsley's going in. And some panko. This is the panko. It's going in. And beef 
is going in. I don't know how to open this. I haven't heard anything about garlic salt or, or powder. Yeah, or I didn't use or, even on or, yet. Or pepper, and I think you're really going to need those because it's going to be bland. Well, I don't think we've gotten that far, one. And two, uh, yesterday's meal, I could not believe that it didn't have the garlic, salt, or pepper, or powder, or any of those. But it still tastes amazing. They only uh, required me to season with salt and pepper. And uh, that was amazing in itself. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, really, salt and pepper? will give you this, but then they, I guess they include these herbs. So wait a minute, let me see. Garlic, parsley, okay. Okay. See, it says season with pepper, mix with hands. Crack one egg. All right, crack in one egg. Happy eggs. All right, let's see. This is so cute, Mom. It's a two-egg carton. Isn't that something? That's pretty good. It's so cute. It's so adorable. A little two-egg carton. Oh, yeah, I took one egg out already. But isn't this adorbs? Happy Easter. Happy Reused Easter. Reused it. Huh? Reused it. Ew. I guess you could. You just crack in one egg, and I'm gonna throw this away. Okay, when I say I don't know what I'm doing, oh, they said put some pepper in there. But you're saying add some garlic salt, of garlic powder. Even though I have fresh cut, fresh minced, one fresh minced, minced garlic. Oh, okay, that's, I forgot about that. But is, is one enough? They did send two. They said use as you like. All right. I'll put some powder in there just because we black. <laughs> Wakanda forever. We use garlic powder. Jesus, help a lot. Okay. Now it says shape into one inch loaves. Then place on a lightly oiled baking sheet. So let's get some olive oil going. See, this uh, Hello Fresh only requires you to have in your house olive oil, salt, and pepper, and they provide everything else. All right. And I happen to use coarse Mediterranean sea salt for salt for me. Okay. So, do I have everything in here? I just feel like I need to put more pepper. My husband likes pepper. He he will put pepper on something before he tastes it. All right, so there's that. Okay, so I have everything. And then, um, mix with your hands. Okay, this is where I never take my wedding ring off, but I'm taking it off of this. Mix with your hands. All right, let's get to mixing. I guess I'd have to use two hands, but I'm using one hand. I'm just kind of meshing it together. Let me see if I can video with one hand in the bowl. I don't know, I feel like I need, no, I guess I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. Now you make me wish I had bell peppers. See, this is when you just need to have bell peppers and things of that nature around the house. Like, you know, as staples, you should always have an onion. You should always have a bell pepper. You should always have um, oranges and lemons just because, you know, those are kind of staples. I really think the bell pepper, I mean, the uh, parsley is just for looks, to be honest because it kind of has a little green flaky thing going on. But the onion's in there, okay. Oh, and it's cold, it's making my hand cold. Now, it get my little baking sheet. I have a little tiny baking sheet that I'm gonna use. 
and then it, I'm supposed to, oh, I was preheating the oven is what I forgot to tell y'all, to 450 all this time. I don't know if I'm there yet. Yes. My, it's beeping that says I'm there. Oh, and I have to oil the pan, so I gotta wash my hands. Oh, my hand is so cold. That meat was freezing. All right, so let's oil the little pan. I just pour a little dollop of oil on there and then I take a clean paper towel and move it around. Is that how you do it, Mom? Yes. What? Yes. Oh. All right, so that's what I did. Now it said move these, these, uh, I'm gonna make two. But these are going to be huge little loaves. They're kind of, this is big. All right, so now we're making, shaping the loaf. I'm going to make it in a kind of a long shape that will resemble a meatloaf. Kind of like that. Put it on my little sheet. Trying to pick up all the onion in the bowl, not leaving none behind. Make it into a ball first and then kind of shape it in the long, the way we norm normally see meatloaf look. They kind of look, what's that shape, mom? Kind of like a potato. No, it's just supposed to be oblong. A loaf is oblong. Oh, there you go, that. You know all the technical terms. Okay. And now. no egg, no egg. Yes, the, I, you missed that. Okay. Oh, that's right. The two you were eggs. too busy yelling at me. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. Stop uh, being funny. Okay, so we got those on the on the little cookie sheet, and then um, it says shape into one inch tall loaves, then place on lightly oiled brush with ketchup mixture. Okay, so that's where this little mixture comes in. I never did really mix it in. This is the ketchup and the uh, balsamic um, vinegar, except I didn't read properly and I thought that's where the garlic cloves went. So I put some garlic cloves in there, so it's gonna be good. And a little more seasoned, but that's what happens. You make little mistakes in the kitchen. How do you think they came up with potato chips? Potato chips, um, that was a mistake. And it was by a black man. Come on, black history. Um, yeah, when I found that out, I said, what? Yeah, a guy was in the kitchen cooking and um, something, I'm, I'm sure I'm not telling the story exactly, but I'll tell you what I remember. So this is just what I remember. Um, he was in the kitchen cooking and someone said, I need to be somewhere, so you have to hurry up, but this is what I want. And it was a kind of a breakfast that he ordered and he wanted potatoes. And because potatoes take so long to cook, the uh, chef thought, well, if I slice them thinly and I fry them, I'll cook them fast. And everyone loved it. Hence, the potato chip. <laughs> Good story, huh? Okay, this doesn't tell me to put it in the oven yet. All right, so I guess I can put it in the oven. So let's see. Oh yes, for 25 minutes. So these are going in. Let me get you guys. We've put our uh, ketchup and balsamic vinaigrette mixture with a little garlic cloves in there on top, going in the oven for 25 minutes. All right. Well, let's go in. You guys heard my beeps a little earlier that I was ready. And I must put my timer on because see the way I'm set up, kitchen timer, 25 start. All right, so that's going for 25 minutes. Now, what should I be doing during that time? All right, meanwhile, peel the sweet potatoes, then cut them into 
half inch cubes. Place them in a pot with salt. Cover them by one inch. Bring to a boil. Okay, here's my suggestion to HelloFresh. I like things in bullet points. I do not like uh, paragraphs. Woo. Can't y'all just put it in a bullet point because I can skip around. I'm that person. I like to move so fast that uh, reading a paragraph slows me down. I like to look at bullet points. So, I wish the recipe how-to was in bullet points. All right, let's get this going. On the stove. And I love a gas stove. I can't stand an electric stove. I pray to never have one. I'm thankful for my gas stove. So got the pot going. Going to put some Mediterranean sea salt in there. Bring that to a boil a little faster. And get these bad boys chopped up. I usually chop off the ends and just set it to the side. Oh, but it said peel first. Duh. Okay, come on. I'm not used to peeling sweet potatoes. Oh, yes, I am. That's how we make yams. Come on. My mother is not listening. She's just holding the phone, watching her movie. I'm listening to you with a laughing. Why are you laughing? I will see. Yes, see, this is the confusing part. The Hello Fresh another day had me. Um, they had some little round uh, yellow potatoes, and I put the whole potato without peeling it in the pot to make uh, mashed potatoes. So I almost got confused. Like, wait, why am I peeling? Because we didn't peel the other day. So that's what happened. Okay. And actually, what I learned was those little round potatoes, they're not like russet potatoes that have thick skin. The little round potatoes' skin was so thin, almost see-through. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, translucent, and that's... Translucent, yeah, that's it. Now, I am... Um, peeling this potato with a steak knife. That's probably not <laughs> what any chef, a real chef, would tell you to do. And that's why they have potato coolers. But okay, so what am I supposed to cut it with? Because it's not cutting it nicely. I need like a, where's my long knife? Oh, oh Lord, I got so much stuff in this dishwasher because I never unload it <laughs> my little secret oh the, this knife is working much better for the cutting it, you know a kitchen needs some good knives like that is like a must all right into one inch now what is half inch cubes lord what is a half I'm gonna do a Cut sideways and then sideways again. So let me just show you guys what I did. Here is I cut them in circles and then I did half like that. And then I'm going to cut it the opposite way to get fours. And that's going to be my half inch cube. Uh huh. Okay. And thank you very much. All right. All right. And I guess, the, and I think when you cut them down, it actually makes it cook faster. Would you agree? Yes. Whatever you're watching is super loud. So what are you watching? There's a siren going. You're probably hearing that. What is it? Bull. The TV series Bull. B U L L. Bull. Bull. And I have two of these. I always cut the ends off. 
And the gardener is here, so you can hear the blower outside. Sorry about that. The meatloaf smells good. I smell it already. It's only been like, what, five, six minutes. Four fifty seems like. Did it say four fifty or four twenty? It says four fifty because I thought that was pretty high for the oven to be on. Four fifty. That's gonna you cook. Turn it down at any point. Cook pretty fast. It says to check on it in ten minutes. I'm so excited to get my fifteen minute workout in today. I don't know what it's gonna be. It might be walking around my gated community. Uh, I might take the dog out, not sure yet. All right. Give you guys a peek. This is what we're looking like. My workstation. Gonna keep it organized. Oh, I hear my water boiling back there. Yes. And I'm almost done uh, with this part. So after I cut it, see, I need bullet points. Does anybody else like me who likes bullet points? I do not like paragraphs. I just don't. Give me a bullet point. But that's because people like me like to skip steps, too. And be like, okay, I'm going to do this and come back to that. <laughs> all right. Um, those are all cut up. Cut into a place in medium pot with a pinch of salt. And enough water to cover by one inch. That, that's a lot of instruction. And I think I might, I think I might have put only a little bit of water in there. So let's get these over into the pot before I waste them all on the floor. Going into the pot. I've mixed them in with the string beans. Hold on. Going into the pot. And I'll let you guys take a peek in the pot. I have picked up a few pieces of parsley on the way. All right, so here's the pot. There they are. It was boiling. When I put the potatoes in, it stopped boiling. So we will let that sit and do its thing. What's next? Let's see. It says cook until tender, tender, bring to a boil. So about 10 minutes. Oh, great. All right, so cool. We're on 16 minutes for the meatloaf. In 10 minutes, we will check on that. Oh, I guess we got a little break because, a little cleanup break because right now I just gotta wait for things. Because the next step, step no, and this is so cool because there are only six steps. Can you guys see that? I think I need some better lighting in here. After meatloaf halves have baked 10 minutes, remove baking sheet from oven, toss green beans in same sheet with a drizzle of olive oil and a pinch of salt and pepper. See, they only say season things with just a little salt and pepper. They are keeping this, honey, low sodium, low, uh, Everything they making sure you just get the taste of the vegetables, which tastes really good. Use tong tongs to avoid burns. All right, see, that was a good note for somebody like me. Return to the oven and roast until meatloafs are cooked thoroughly. Green beans are tender and lightly crisp, about 15 minutes. All right, so see, there's nothing to do. I washed those already, and we're gonna put them in with the uh, meatloaf with a little drizzle of olive oil, salt, and pepper. And I think my granny would have had me cut the ends off of these peas. So that's what I'm gonna do while I wait. Mom, are you there? Yes, are you cooking straight beans or are you cooking peas? They're two different uh -oh, things. Oh, let's look at the package. I think they were, oh Lord, they are called Green beans. Green beans, Mom. Okay. 
you referenced as you referenced as green beans and then pea. So I just wanted you to be correct. Oh, green beans, green beans. Oh, oh my lord! I got a boil on the seat. This is what you don't want to do. Over boil the doggone. Oh lord! See what to do. It said bring it to a boil, but then what? But when your boiling comes over your pot. What what you say? Adjust your fire. Turn it down a little bit. Okay. That's what I did. And now it's not. It was a, if I didn't turn around right then, it would have come over and then I would have had to clean up the whole stove yet again. Whew. My lord. Things you have to do in this kitchen. All right, I'm taking a pause for the calls and got to let everything catch up to me now. Action. Preparing the meatloaf with fresher ingredients is better than using the package of ingredients that you can get from meatloaf because it packs way too much sodium. Yeah, I'm sure. Ooh, I might have steamed up the camera. That was 10 minutes on a boil. It says pour them, pour the water off, and then pour them back into the pot. I'm a one-woman show, guys. I'm the cameraman, the cook, the chef, the student. <laughs> all at all in one. All right, so it says, oh, but I need my husband to go get me some butter. Oh, Lord. Well, you know what? We're going to try this with olive oil. I don't have butter. I've ran out for the, the last uh, thing we had. So let's see. It said to smash these up. See, I have to have the ingredients right here. Meanwhile, then place a bit in pot, pinch of salt. Bring to a boil, tender. Okay, uh, potato masher, tip if potatoes have cooled, no. Butter and honey, okay. They did send a pack of honey. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil and honey because I've run out of butter, just simply. So hold on while I do that. Okay, I got my mash on. You guys see it? But let's taste it. Since I didn't have butter, I put the smallest little drizzle of uh, olive oil and I used the honey that came with the recipe. But I'm all about tasting stuff because if it ain't right, brown sugar is gonna be. It's good. I mean, you know, sweet potato is already sweet. So that's good. We're gonna leave it just like it is. Time to check on our meat. That looks beautiful. Mom, they puffed up. They got like bigger. Yeah, the meatloaf. It got um, kind of big and brown. Wow, I wonder is it cooked all the way through? Yes? No, um, it tastes good without it. It tastes good without the butter. We're okay. No, we didn't have any butter, but it still tastes good. No, it's uh, it's okay. I mean, we need butter, but not. Sit, go ahead and um, do what you're doing. It's fine. Thank you, Mom. How do I tell if this is cooked in the middle? Toothpick. But how's a toothpick gonna tell me? Oh, really? Okay, let's see. Toothpick test. No, it's coming out clean. Do it the, on the ends and then the middle. The ends are cooked. And I did the middle, and there's no raw meat coming out of there. No, it looks pretty brown. But I just feel like it's not enough. You know, it, we like our meat a little. I'll put a little bit more. I'll put it in there a little longer. Just because that just don't seem right. See? And right. It's, we don't want you returning it because you're not going to 
Right, like we like well done meat, so I'm gonna put another five minutes on that. So kitchen timer zero five start. Yes, cause I we just like you know we like well done meat. We don't play around with no meat that's not well done. Okay, so while that's doing that, it called for me to get these uh, string beans drizzled with some salt and pepper. So I have my pan here. Beans are going into a little dark pan. I'm gonna drizzle them with a little olive oil. Olive oil, and I give it a nice drizzle. I like olive oil. And some Mediterranean sea salt. And a little black pepper. And then I'm gonna pop these in because I think they were only kind of a five minute dealy too. Going in. Yeah. All right, ooh, that meat smells fantastic. All right, now there's a couple of ingredients I haven't used, well only one. So I wonder where does the uh, almond halves come in? I probably put them in the string beans, I bet, at the end. All right, so once I uh, make a plate, I'll be back, guys. See ya. Okay, so we are pretty much done. I am all the way to the plating phase. This lighting, there it is. All right, so I'm putting that off to the side. Husband has his for lunch. I have mine for dinner. So that's his container. We're gonna take things out of the oven. I'm really praying this meat is done. I'm gonna have to cut. What I do when I'm not sure is I cut mine and leave his whole and hope for the best. So let's cut mine in half because I can't play with no red meat, honey. I like brown all the way through. So let's see here. And uh, like I said, I'm the cameraman and the cook. So can you guys see? I can't even see yet. And it's stuck to the pan here. Okay, I'm going to have to <laughs> put you guys on hold for two seconds. Hold on. Hold on. Because I have it stuck to the, the bottom. All right, that's what I wanted to see. Here's what I was trying to show everybody. That that meat is brown on the inside and super juicy. Super juicy. And because my husband loves sauce, I'm going to put a little additional ketchup on there. All right. So, let's get to plating mine. There's my dinner for later. Pan over. And I always just eat half. That's another thing. I don't put the whole thing on my plate. Okay. I was taught as a kid to eat all your food, right? So that's what. Meanwhile, I only put half on my plate. Because if I don't, guess who's going to eat it all? Okay. This girl right here. The meat tastes really good, guys. I'm just putting a little additional cats up on it because that's how we like things saucy. We like things cooked well and saucy. All right. It's almost done. I'm just waiting on... I think the green beans have had their five minutes of funk in the oven. Yeah, they're sizzling a bit. Here they are coming out. And they're just kind of snapped and lightly seasoned. And I was so excited when it said use some tongs because I actually had tongs. Like, what are the chances? I don't know where in the well. I don't remember ever buying these. So I don't know how I have them, but um, I'm feeling myself for having the utensil that they actually called for and not doing some kind of uh, compromise. 
improvise. All right, well, I don't make the cutest plate, but it's gonna be. And because the meatloaf was a little too soft for me, I had to put it back in with a little more balsamic and ketchup on top. So I tried to stiffen it up a bit. So, you know, we just like charred meat. Uh, not too charred, because we don't believe in carcinogens. <laughs> But um, we like a, a stiff meatloaf. So I had to just put that back in. Replating, it happens.